Hey guys, it's Brendan the Paleo Dude, and welcome back to another Jurassic World figure review and unboxing. Today we'll be taking a look at the new Mega Destroyers Carcharodontosaurus and Pentaceratops. Holy cow, have I been waiting so long to get my hands on these figures. They're massive. I love the color of the Carcharodontosaurus. The, just the paint application and diversity and the mixture of the colors alone is perfect. It looks so well done compared to other Mattel figures. Um, very much like the original Cacardontosaurus, which is in the back there. Um, they applied a lot of love and care into it, and I'm pretty sure the pattern is a lot different from the other Cacardontosaurus, um, so we'll be comparing that as well. But yeah, no, amazing figure, super well done. The colors of blue kind of remind me of the Sukamimus figure, actually. Um, so I might do a comparison video with those guys in the future. The Pentaceratops is very interesting. It's a massive Ceratopsian figure. And for some reason, the head is rubbery. Um, very rubbery. It, it, look at that. It, and the horns, too. Oh, I was using the, uh, the Raptor resonating chamber to hold it up. The head usually is down like that in the package. Um, but the ram is huge. Big ram. Okay, so, and they both come with capture gear. Obviously, the Carcharodontosaurus capture gear is the same as the first one. Um, hold up. Wait a second. Oh, the tail's rotatable. Oh, good. Sorry. Um, I was wondering why it was down in the package. Um, so the Carcharodontosaurus has... Oh, that's interesting. So it has one action where the head goes up and down and it's got like two chomps, dual chomp, yeah. And the Stegosaurus has the swinging tail, but the Pentaceratops has two action features, which is interesting. I think the Carcharodontosaurus is, is meant to like have two action features where it's that double chomp, um, but the Stego only has one action, I think think. Yeah. And then the Penta has two. It has this ram up feature and it also has this sway side to side feature which will demonstrate better outside of box. It's just so squishy. What the heck? And of course they painted this little side um, spike which they didn't in the Sinoceratops. Um, so that's a step up um, and they got all of the sp spikes on the horn. Um, or all the horns on the frill, I mean, painted as well. Wow, that's a nice figure. Man, I love it. But it's it's huge in comparison to other Ceratopsian figures. So let's get to the Carcharodontosaurus out of the package. And I'm pretty sure it's just chilling in there. Gotta undo these. Yep, yeah, wow, it was just it was just chilling in there, huh? Um, so there's the scan code. The feet are well done too. They're pretty unique compared to other theropods in the lineup because they've got these like very round toe pads kind of kind of like a, a lion maybe I don't know um damn I'm loving the orange around the eye and it's gradient to the like transition to green and then blue um and then the spines down the back or the quills whatever you want to call them they're super cool um the color really uh brings light to those it really attracts your eye to the front of the animal. Um, they've got them coming down to the all the way to the base of the tail, and some are down on the stomach as well. And the underneath of the neck and the jaw are also beige, which again really highlights the head, um, brings it out quite well. And I think that everything inside the mouth is painted too, which is great. Um, and let's grab the capture gear. I think it's just being held in by. Um, yeah, it's just, wow, it's just being held in by one little protective thing. Very interesting. Um, so it's typical, it's, it's very specifically shaped for the Carcharodontosaurus head. Um, pose the arms down. You just slap it on there. I think this is how it goes, yep. It covers the eyes. There is a little thing on the top of the head for like a chain or a rope to go. Same with the back of the neck, if you want to walk it like a dog. It also gives space, little room for the quills so it doesn't get in the way of those. 
Um, and then it has all these little airbags around the sharp part, so I guess the animal doesn't get hurt on it, um, which is kind of nice. And you can make it break out with the chomping action feature. Very cool. I love the capture gear. Never gets old. Um, kind of hoping that we see it more often in other figures in the future, maybe, in more Camp Cretaceous figures. I know the Rex had it as well, um, but it would be kind of cute if the uh, the Roaring or Electronic figures came with it, or even the smaller figures. I wouldn't mind if they, well, I would mind, I'd love it if the small action figures um, with action features came with equipment like this. Um, maybe even eventually every dinosaur comes with capture gear. That would be super cool. Um, but for now, this lineup is really doing a justice with it. Just like how the Dino Damage figures bring back the nostalgia of old Kenner figures, so does this capture gear. So next, let's do the Pentaceratops. I think it only has two things holding it in. Nope, it has something on its leg but I'm sure I can just slip that out. Yep. Wow, okay, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Let's grab this capture gear. I want to see how it works. Um, we got one, two, three, and we're out. We eat the box. Oh, uh, we can check the back. Yeah, we got the, the head going up and down and then it breaks out. It's weird, it doesn't show the side-to-side -side motion, it just shows the up and down motion. Um, so here's the capture gear. I probably should have looked at how it goes on. <laughs> so let's let's put it on first before we check out anything else. Um, geez, I'm not sure how it... Okay, I think it goes like this. Oh wow, it goes around the head, maybe? Maybe, maybe not. I'm assuming it. this is supposed to go around the face. Like this. Like, okay. And then, oh man, that's, that's complicated. Okay, so the capture gear, I guess it restrains the head from thrashing. <laughs> the beak sticks out, kind of looks like some off-brand uh, super villain, um, the eyes sticking out there, but these go around the horns a bit and the frill, and I guess the ramming attack is what frees it. There we go. Oh, nice. Okay, so there's the capture gear. Um, it's very interestingly shaped, but it's a nice design. Pretty creative to have it go around the frill and the neck. Um, it's kind of cool. I like it. Um, and so the head's permanently down like this, which is actually kind of nice because it's like a grazing action. Well, here, like that, I guess. Um, and to, like, protect its, I guess, the back of the body and stuff, it's like a downwards aggressive position stance. And there is a huge range of head motion with this compared to the past Ceratopsians. There's a lot of power and force with the upstroke of the head, a lot of range going on there. So I guess the head being lower gives for even more um, tossing action. You can really flip smaller dinosaurs with this feature. So let's just grab this guy for example. Um, do you get the horns under that? Here, let's try like that. There we go. Um. Yeah, you can really, really ram and flip smaller dinosaurs, or larger ones. I love that the head's very rubbery. Like, it's the horns, too. Um, the paint's pretty thick, but I can see it wearing fast, especially if you, like, um, rub it a lot or uh, bend it a lot. Um, same with the beak. So, unlike on harder plastic, I think it might succumb quite easier to wear, plastic wear, um, but the details are so phenomenal in the head. They painted all parts of the beak, all of the horns are painted, the bottom of the neck is painted too. Um, I think the head you can also rotate. Yeah, you can, wow, you can rotate the head too. Oh, 
yeah, there's a lot of rotation with the head. You can kind of look down, and you can kind of position it up as well. So it's looking up, but the neck is down. See? Down. Up. So that's nice. I didn't realize that was an option. And it doesn't affect the ramming at all. Okay, so I'm going to actually just keep the head up. It's a little bit more natural. And then, so there's this sideways attack too. It wasn't really necessary to add this, but it just the fact that they went ahead and did it with that kind of side body segment that they did with the Stegosaurus is really nice. Um, you can have it do kind of like a side jab if you turn the head like that, or even like this with the horns. And let's see if we can combine that both features. Here, wait, kind of awkward to hold. Yeah, you can you can use them both. It's a little awkward though. I think you can't fully ram up when it's like this. Yeah. So if you hit that while it's like this, it can't. But if you release, then it can. Whereas if you do that and then a side attack, you can do both. Um, so it flails around, but man, is it huge. And the tail's also rotatable. So if your tail's like this in the package, you can just flip it easily. And the tail's a decent length for a ceratopsian. I like that. And I like that they did the stripes on the back too, so the body's not fully empty. And they have this light paint on the bottom as well. So this is a premium figure. Like Mattel fully went all out on it. Um, loving the highlights on the head too. The eyes and the um, parts of the frill here are highlighted by this darker color, which I absolutely love. It really makes the uh, the figure stand out more. Um, let's grab the scan code too before I forget. There you go. You can pause the video too um, to grab that. And of course, the the limbs go forward and back. There's no. Oh, and they're also they can kind of spread too, just a bit. Same with the back legs, of course. Um, there we go. Let's compare it to other ceratopsians. I'm sure a lot of you have seen. It is monstrously huge compared to... Oh, it's not... Oh, wow. It's not... It's not actually too bad compared to the Sinoceratops. The the height of the back... Okay, the length of the tail on the Sinoceratops makes up for the body. But when it comes to height at the hips, it's just like slightly... Slightly taller. Um... See, it's just, just like slightly taller. The frill is definitely taller, but it seems like the heads are roughly the same size. It's just the frill is a lot bigger. That's interesting. I was expecting it to... Okay. The front legs are the same, if not the... Stra or the the um, Sinoceratops is a little bit slightly taller front legs. The back legs, back legs on the penta are taller. Okay, and the feet are slightly bigger. Yeah, so there, it's, it's not actually, it's not too much larger than the Sino, because um, the Sino is already big compared to the trike. And the trike, of course, yeah, the trike's small. It's way shorter. Um, it's a little at the hips, um, a little bit shorter in length too. The frills obviously tiny in comparison, and the head's slightly smaller as well. Like, not so, oh wow, yeah, the Penta definitely has that massive size advantage with the head. Um, even without the frill, the head is huge in comparison. We need a larger trike someday. Mattel still hasn't done that. <laughs> And I don't think we'll ever get that. Same with the Ankylosaurus, but whatever. Um, we can keep dreaming. So there we go. Wow. That is such a beautiful figure. Both of them are. I love them. Holy cow. Um, so there we have it. Oh, and I guess, yeah, we'll compare the Carcardontosaurus to... <laughs> um, I like that Mattel gave 
both very distinct and unique paint jobs, kind of what they did with the two uh, Mashikasaurus. They included completely different colors and completely different paint jobs, but I do like the fact that they did keep this darker color. It's not the same. This is brown. This is more of like a bra uh, black purple brown. Um, they kept a darker color on top and they have that orange gradient transition on both figures. It's just the base color on this one's blue and the base color on this one's beige. Um, this one doesn't actually have that painted throat and bottom jaw and this one actually has full dark head whereas this one doesn't. Wow, actually this is looking a lot better because the eyes better highlighted. It seems like they chose a color that stands out orange or yellow and this eyes like orange with like a a brown pupil yeah they just use the pupil as the same color as the back so it doesn't stand out as well as on this figure um the newer kark and i think yeah so better eye better throat coloration so i guess i like this one better this one maybe perfectly based off of um, Jurassic World Evolution, but I this one stands out to me as a more striking um, color choice and pattern choice, but this one does have a painted tail. It does highlight the spikes or quills on the tail, um, whereas this one does not have that. That would have made this one perfect, so it's kind of a tie for me between which one is better in terms of paint and pattern. Um, but man, Mattel really rocked both Carcharodontosaurus paint jobs. They are spot on, perfect, they're, they're visually stunning, the figure is well made in detail. This is again some of Mattel's best work right here. Um, same with the Penta and the Stego paint job of course is also up to standard with these guys. Um, so no, I, I love these, these are amazing. I don't know, I might buy another one of the Penta, because that's just, that seems like a fun figure just to use, but if you use it, there's a high chance those horns are getting scuffed. Um, so I might have a shelf figure and then a use figure. Um, yeah, so before we go, I'll just show a size comparison between the Rex and the Penta. Uh, a small, smaller Rex. Wow, it's a big figure. See, Triceratops should be this big. They should make Triceratops this big, because that's a good, good quality size comparison between the two. Like, that looks nice. And with the bigger Rex, it probably looks even nicer. Um, so yeah, no, I think we should get a Triceratops this scale. Maybe Dominion is planning to make one that big because we haven't seen like a nice official Dominion trike Just a weird off-color green one So yeah, no, um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and stay tuned for more videos like this um, There's other unboxings that I've done recently if you haven't seen those check them out I'll include a playlist here with all of my Jurassic unboxings and be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet Usually if you're at the end of the video and haven't subscribed, I highly recommend you do to keep up to date with my channel's content. So again, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.